Afternoon, Gary. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Obviously, disappointing uh, result against Chelsea, but something we've seen from your sides in this last 10, 12 fixtures is every time you've suffered a defeat, you've responded with a victory. Is there something you've done off the back of a defeat to do that? And I presume you'd be doing exactly the same for the game this weekend. Yeah, no, not really, Mark. I think we, yeah, we always try and prepare and regardless of what's gone before, I've said it a lot this season, regardless of what's happened in the game before, we try and give ourselves the best chance of, of winning the next one. Um, the real disappointing thing around the Chelsea one was that we, we didn't, I mean, there are different ways of deserving things, but we the way the game went, the XG, um, how well we played for long spells, is we, sh we should never have lost that game. So the, the nature of the defeat was disappointing. Um, but yeah, Crystal Palace will be a very different challenge. Very good side. Roy's done a great job, well organised. Um, only con conceded a couple of goals from, from open play since he's gone in, and you can see why they're a tough team to break down. So a lot of work this week on, on getting ready for Crystal Palace and... And then also trying to add some stuff to, to what we've been doing to, to try and move us forward. The Crystal Palace game here at the Vitality was probably, you'd admit, one of the worst performances you'd seen whilst you have been the manager of the club. Clearly a different manager. What have you seen from your, your analysis about how much Palace have changed under Roy compared to Patrick? Yeah, there, there are some differences. Um, still fantastic players, real in, individual talent in there. You look at the attacking threat they have. Not only on the top line, but from sort of the the midfielders as well. Eze, Schlup, Zaha, Elise. Um, decore has been excellent as a sort of holding midfielder since he's come in there. Um, so, yeah, they have some real, really good players. Um, like the centre-back pairing as well of Anderson and, and Gehi. So, um, yeah, they're a good side. Roy's obviously gone in there, managed to freshen things up a little bit. Sometimes fresh set of eyes. He knows the group well as well from when he was there before. Um yeah, and has managed to get a real good tune out of them. So it will be a tough afternoon. Sellers Park's never an easy place to go. Always a, an intense atmosphere. Um, but yeah, a, a good opportunity for us to, to win another game of football, hopefully, and, and, and push onwards up the league. Under Patrick, they were the worst performing team when it came to collective distances run during Premier League matches. Slightly different now under Roy. And when they've got so many players like Eze, Elise, Zaha that can hit you on the break, which is something that you've got the ability to do, almost sets it up quite nicely to be quite a, an end-to-end -end game. Yeah, I mean, hopefully it isn't. Hopefully we can control that a little bit. But yeah, they are a threat on counter, definitely. Um, yeah, they're, physically they're a very, very good team. So if the game does get chaotic and, and open, and yeah, Zaha, Elise, as I've said, they can hurt you. They're, they're, they're strong as well around the loose balls and things that drop in the middle of the park, which is one of the main issues we had here, really, that... When they, apart from we conceded two soft goals, when the game got a little bit messy and scrappy, they, they seemed to grab control of it a little bit. So, yeah, a, a good performance from us will be needed, definitely, because they're, a, yeah, I know they've had a, a season that they probably f feel like they're below where they should be, but a very, very good side, as you can see with the, the turning results since, since Roy's gone back. There's only a point that separates Palace and Bournemouth in the league table. Now we know that there's in excess of three million at stake for every single position you finish in the, the Premier League. Has uh, Neil or Richard reminded you that it'd be nice to put one over on them and, and leapfrog them because that could be worth a few quid in the summer? No, I, yeah, I mean, I'm well aware of how important it is that we finish as high as possible, but um, there's probably 200 million at stake next year for trying to stay up again as well. So obviously things that we can do now that can help us as we look at, at next season as well. So, yeah, as always, a real focus on this game and what it needs to look like from us. But because of the work that the lads have managed to do, we do have, we do come into the last few games of the season with with a, a more of yeah less pressure on every result. So we can we can go into games, we can start to add things, maybe things that I've wanted to add that we haven't been able to because of the nature of the next game being another cup final and we need every point being so precious. Um, so the, ne the next few weeks does give us a little bit more freedom to, to have a look at some things as well as try and get results. And what's the injury update with regards to a few players that are possibly out of the game? Anyone you're looking forward to having back? Um, Junior Traore is still out. Um, very hopeful that we'll see him back on the, yeah, on the pitch before the end of the season. Um, Tav still out. You may have to remind me who else we have. I think the rest of them are in a good place. Um, 
yeah, the rest should all be available. So we have a yeah, we have a strong group available to us. Keith is back after his concussion. Yeah, Keith is back, so that'll be a plus. Obviously, he's come come off the bench a couple of times recently, and um, yeah, he gives us another another attacking outlet. So yeah, pleased to have Kiefer back available. I know, obviously, you said after last week's game that Bournemouth pretty much safe. There's a nine point gap to you and the side third bottom, both with three games to play. Mathematically, you could be safe this weekend. How nice would that be? Although it feels like you're safe anyway, just to confirm it. Yeah, I think that that's the thing. It, that you, we've got 39 points, and 39 should be enough. But until it's done, you know, you're always there's always a or they've managed to win again. So the longer it goes, the the more nervy it can start to feel again. So yeah, let's let's get it done officially as soon as we can. Take care of it ourselves on Saturday with with a point or three. Um, and then, yeah, importantly for me, the performance and um, trying to put a few things right that we've we've suffered with recently. Brilliant, thank you. Tell us more about Paul. Oh, take the mic, Paul. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. That freedom you feel now to try things out with with sort of longer term plans in mind. How how rare is that? How how unusual an opportunity, and how how, how keen are you to? to take advantage of that yeah no I, I don't want to oversell that the main focus is getting points tomorrow definitely um, but of course if if we were on 29 points going into tomorrow's game there would have been 100% focus on like we have to take something from this game um, whereas now there is yeah we are desperate to take something from this game but next season is coming and there are things that we can start to put in place obviously there's a big, been a big thing made about um, defensive set plays and the amount of goals we've conceded, so it has to improve. Has to improve by next season. Sometimes difficult to change that in a in a short period of time. So next season will come, and we we can't concede as many goals next season from set plays as we have this season. Um, defending the penalty area, crosses, and things. So um, yeah, a, a lot of work this week on on trying to move things on. Whereas maybe if if the situation was different, maybe we'd have held off on that till the summer. Mark mentioned the game here against Palace. Can you remember? how low you felt after that yeah it was a, it was a tough period for us i think um yeah i remember feeling quite low the, the, the whole way through that spell i think burnley was around then um brentford away um we were in a in a tough spot but as always from me a clear yeah view of where we were and what the situation was and what i expected from the players throughout that and they still kept giving me it so um I felt we were short at that moment with the injuries that we had and um even you know I think Palace Lloyd he's just come back in um from a long spell so it's there, there were things in, at, going on at that time that meant we weren't at weren't at our optimum level so um now it's very different um but Palace have also improved from that point so two teams that have improved since we played here that day um and hopeful that we can yeah, we can show that we can go away to a, a good side, a tough place to go and, and um, yeah, secure a big result. That day was the first time I think Bill Foley went onto the pitch to acknowledge the crowd or to be introduced to the crowd. Um, so it felt like a, a sort of a, a big party day in a way and then the, obviously the performance followed. With him being so ingrained in sport for so long, I presume, well, how, how was he after, after the... The, the result do you remember yeah but Bill would have been disappointed with the Palace result I'm sure yeah the same as the same as we all were um, of course when when the owner's in town you want to put on a decent performance um, but there is another Premier League team that turns up that day who have good players and they want to put on a good performance as well so um, yeah in the Premier League even if you're one of the best teams not every day goes your way um, we work very hard obviously to try and make sure more of them do than don't um, I know that's that's the reason that we've managed to get to thirty nine points. With with Palace, when Roy Hodgson came back, there was an immediate bounce. I think they won three in a row. The last four games, they've only scored in in, in one of those games. Have you noticed from from analysing them that you know it was a sort of a a bounce that's faded, if that even happens outside us talking about it? Have teams worked out a slightly different way of playing against them? As have you noticed why there's been that sort of change in their form? I think in their last performance they were excellent. They went away to Tottenham and I thought they were very good. I thought they were well organised throughout the ball. I thought Tottenham struggled to create chances. I thought Palace were a threat. Um, the one nil loss was probably not a fair result on the on the performance. So um yeah no I think they 
they, they they score a lot of their goals from individual quality. You know, you get Zaha one on one enough. You get Elise one on one enough. They they create real problems for you. So um, obviously some days that can click for them. Sometimes fine margins it might go past the post or um, so yeah. There's there's obviously small reasons why things can look different. But the Spurs game as a whole, when I watched it, I was very impressed with what I saw because I know now how, how good Spurs can be and the, and the players that they have. So for for Palace to go there and put on a performance that they did, I thought was an uh, yeah an impressive impressive performance. So um, no, I mean he's he's done a good job. I think everyone thought they were in a in a bit of trouble before he came in. Um, obviously, I I always felt that they'd managed to pull themselves away. I thought they had too much. They had some fixtures coming up around a lot of teams below them that I thought they would be able to pick up results in. Um, but that doesn't mean it's easy for always to let to go in and, and do the job. So, yeah, fair play to him and the players that secured another another season in the Premier League next year. Um, and we go there, hopefully, to put a couple more points on the board, whether it be one or three, and, and, and secure ours. And Gary, this is your last Premier League game in your 30s, I think. Mm. <laughs> Have the last six months aged you. Yeah. I saw some guys um, managed to pop to my old golf club the other day. I haven't been there for about a year. And as I walked in, they were like, oh, football management must be tough. And I was like, yeah, it's just been an interesting few months. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they said I was aging. I need to look after myself. So um, once the season's done, I'll try.